And now let's consider Hayek on the idea of a commodity reserve currency. This essay is called, quite simply, A Commodity Reserve Currency, and it was published in 1943. This was during World War II, and most of the world had left the gold standard to fight the war, and the question here was, what was going to replace the gold standard? Hayek understood quite well that the gold standard had lost its previous mystique. Hayek starts by presenting the advantages of the former gold standard. For one thing, gold was an international currency, which meant that different nations could use it with each other, yet it did not require any overarching international agency to govern its quantity. Second, Hayek argued that a gold standard would bring largely predictable monetary policy. And third, Hayek argued that a gold standard tended to increase or decrease the money supply when that was what was needed for the economy. By the way, this is the one claim that modern economists are most likely to disagree with, but as we'll see in a moment, even Hayek understood the limitations of this argument. So what are the disadvantages of a gold standard? Well, imagine that all of a sudden people want to hold more money, hold more liquidity, and buy fewer goods and services. That will lower the production of goods and services, and what is it you get in return? Well, if people want to hold more money, then you'll have a greater incentive to produce more money, which here means to produce gold, but now we get to the two problems. The first problem for Hayek is that the supply of gold responds only slowly to increased demand for gold. The other problem is that having more gold mining, well, that just doesn't help the economy very much. So whenever you get the switch where people want to hold more money and buy fewer goods and services, you end up with some kind of economic problem, and in part, those problems stem from the nature of a gold standard. Hayek endorsed the idea of replacing the gold standard with a more general bundle of commodities. And note, this was a common proposal at the time. Hayek gives the example, just a hypothetical example, of a bundle possibly being defined as a certain amount of wheat, certain amount of sugar, certain amount of copper, and also a certain amount of rubber. So rather than a U.S. dollar giving you a right to so many ounces of gold, that dollar would be convertible, at least in principle, into this broader bundle of underlying commodities. Now here's a key difference. When the demand for liquidity rises, the market demand goes up for all of the commodities in the monetary bundle. So individuals, by demanding more money, they would also be demanding more wheat, more rubber, more whatever is inside the money. And Hayek argued that this would stimulate the economy more than simply having the demand for gold go up. The commodity bundle thus remedies one of the disadvantages of the gold standard, and furthermore, the dis different commodities in this bundle, it may be easier to produce more of them more rapidly than was the case for gold. So for Hayek, here we're getting the advantages of the gold standard without the disadvantages. This bundle could still be used as an internationally valid money. It would be governed by rules. It would be largely predictable. But when there is an increase in the demand for money or liquidity, a market economy would respond more promptly and it would do more to encourage economic activity more generally. At least that's how Hayek saw the matter in 1943. Of course, after World War II ended, the world went on a different track. The world ended up locked into and committed to paper money systems rather than commodity standards. But nonetheless, this essay of Hayek gives us one glimpse into an alternative path that was being considered at the time very strongly. This essay is also interesting for showing that Hayek understood the Keynesian argument against the gold standard very well, and he was quite concerned with trying to develop some kind of policy remedy or counter to that argument.